Hello universe, universal fungi here. And today we're demonstrating, in my opinion, the most simple grain prep tech out there. So let's get started. Step one, you need grain. There are many grains to choose from. We like using whole oats, but rye berries, brown rice, millet, popcorn, and even wild bird seed, to just name a few, can be used as mushroom grain spawn. Need a container, preferably a bucket like this one. It's okay if you don't have a bucket like this, but you just need something to hold the grain and the water overnight. Measure out your greens. We pressure cook our greens in these mason jars. So the ratio is one full jar of dry oats equals to two jars of oats that have been soaked overnight. If you're using different grains, this ratio may differ. Now, we're measuring out the amount of grain that we want, pouring it into our bucket. It's super simple, it's super easy. And lastly, you just add water. That's basically it, until the grains are covered. We use the tap water, it's perfectly fine. And then we let the grains sit overnight to soak. The grains need to absorb some of that water in the bucket. We're partially hydrating the grains. After like 12 to 16 hours, we're going to come back and check them and see if they're ready. So, hello universe, universal fungi here with part two of my simple grain prep tech. In the previous video, we measured out the desired grain and had it soak overnight. Today, we're going to check on the grains and get them ready for sterilization. These oats have been soaking for 13 hours now. And what we're looking for is for the grain to be slightly soft, but not mushy. I like to put an oat between my fingers and see if I can split it. If I can't, they need to soak longer until they're easier to split. Okay, now that the grains are partially hydrated, we need to allow the excess moisture to evaporate. I like to strain out the oats in a colander and then transfer them to trays. I'm sure and have seen more efficient ways to allow the grains to dry but I find for myself that this works, especially if you're doing this at home. I set a 15 minute timer and mix the grains to allow whatever moisture that's been trapped under the grains a chance to evaporate. I do this twice, a total of 30 minutes in air drying. Now that the grains have dried a little, they're ready to be loaded into mason jars. If you still see some moisture, that's okay. They can still be loaded into the jars and come out fine. If you load the grains and they're too wet, they will turn to mush in the sterilization process. Don't fill the jars to the top. In the pressure cooker, the grains will continue to expand, so we need to leave some space. That way, when the grains are fully colonized, we can shake them up. Now it's time to sterilize the grains in the pressure cooker. First, we need to add tinfoil to the top of the jars so moisture doesn't collect and create rust. We also don't screw the lids on all the way, leaving them about a quarter unscrewed to allow the steam that builds up inside out. Next, we add water to the pressure cooker. We use a stand inside of our PC, so we add enough water to almost reach the stand. This is plenty of water and you will still have leftover at the end. This means you could add less water. It just depends how long you're going to cook it for, and how many jars are in the PC. Recently, I have been adding this other stand that came with this cooker to ensure the tinfoil doesn't fly off and block the vent. That would be bad. Nevertheless, I haven't had issues not using it, and it's just an extra safety precaution. Next, put your cooker on the stove, on high, and wait for steam to build. We are waiting for steam to start coming out of the vent where the weight will go and the top vent to pop up. Now that steam has built up in a pressure cooker, put on the 15 weight. Some cookers have different sizes. Make sure you have the right one. After the weight is on, look at the gauge and wait for it to read 15 PSI. When it does, the weight will shake. Lower the heat on the stove to low and start a timer for 90 minutes. Make sure the pressure cooker maintains 15 PSI throughout the 90 minutes. If not, you run the chance of contamination later. After 90 minutes at 15 PSI, 
Turn off your stove and let the pressure cooker cool down on its own. Don't touch it or move it until all the steam is gone. I like to wait until the next day to open it and check the grains. And now we have sterilized grain. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for future videos. My goal is to show how easy it is to grow your own food and medicine at home. Peace, love, and happiness.